Hey guys, my name is Karthik and I am from isrodomation.com and welcome to another video of our Specflow course. And in this video, I'll be talking about installing and getting started with Specflow. So in this video, we'll be seeing how we can start installing Specflow within Visual Studio 2022 and all these feature files or step definitions and creating a simple steps. These are all going to be happening magically using the Specflow extensions, which we'll be discussing in this particular video. So I have already installed the Visual Studio 2022 in my machine and it is ready for starting to install the Specflow within this particular IDE. So before we start creating a new project, so if you try creating a new project over here and if you search for a template for Specflow, you will see that there is nothing available over here. Well, that is something that you can actually install if you just go using this continue without code and if you go to the extensions and select this manage extensions and search for specflow over here so you will see that there is a extension already available for visual studio 2022 so go ahead and install that and the installation is going to happen once we reboot our visual studio ide so i'm going to do that and you will see that it is trying to install it within my visual studio community edition of 2022 and once the installation is fully completed i'm going to open the visual studio once again so now if I go to create a new project using this create new project, you will see that there's a specflow project already available on the top of the list with new tag over here. So which means this is a new specflow project, which means using this particular template, we can create a new specflow project. And as I told you, specflow is already a cross platform tool available for Windows, Linux and Mac operating system. So you can see that it is already listed over here and it is supporting the c sharp language and this is especially for testing purpose so all these labels are here for us so i'm going to select this specflow i'm going to hit next and i'm going to create a new specflow project and i'm going to call this as specflow basics and i'm going to hit create and then i'm going to choose the framework as dotnet 6 which is the newest framework that we have got and then i'm going to use the test framework as n unit instead of XUnit or MS test, but you can still use any of these test frameworks. So I'm just gonna leave the default as it is. And I'm also gonna leave this add fluent assertions library over here. And then I'm gonna hit create, and this is gonna create a new project for me. So now this particular project is gonna automatically create a few folder for us, something like the drivers folder, features folder, step definitions, and support folder. So these are all coming for me automatically like a scaffolding once I install the Specflow extension in Visual Studio. I mean, you can still run your Specflow test without using that installation of the extensions, but it's going to be quite hard and in fact, very painful if you don't really have that extension. So it's better to install that extension in Visual Studio, which makes our life more easier. All right. So these are the folders that we have got. And if you go to the dependencies, and if you select this packages, you will see that we already have the package for the specflow in unit and the specflow plugin for living doc as well. So all these are automatically installed for us once we create a specflow project using the project template, along with the in unit as well as the fluent assertion library that we have selected. And then it also has a default, like a pre-built feature files as well as the step definitions over here. And this is the calculator feature file and this is like a calculator step definition so it is available for us so let's see how that particular feature file is going to even look like so once i double click that you will see that it is gonna show me the feature files over here and currently you will note that this particular feature file has a feature name like calculator and it has a scenario with a scenario name and there is a given and when and then steps over here so this is basically like the scenario that you are actually writing and you'll also notice that these step definitions are currently automatically mapped to this particular step definitions on this calculator step definitions.cs file the step definitions available for us over here and all these magics are happening using what is called as this binding so this binding is actually doing all the magic of gluing the step definitions from here to the step definitions sitting in this particular CS file. And if you're familiar with the Java language binding of the Cucumber, you might know that there is something called as glue they use to map the step definitions with a feature file. 
I mean, in C sharp world, it is much, much easier. All you have to do is just define this binding attribute and you're pretty good to go. And let's say if I just remove this bindings attribute, if I save this particular CS file, and if I go back to my features file over here, and if I try doing a build solution, you will notice that instantly the step definitions turns into a purple color. It actually tells that this particular step definition is currently not being mapped to this particular step definition is listed in this particular CS file. And if I just try to right click this particular steps, you will see that there are going to be three new options coming up, which is like go to definitions, define steps and rename steps. So this go to definition is something that if you right click and if you click it, you will see that it is going to give you a message saying the step is undefined. Do you want to copy a step definition skeleton snippet to the clipboard? So this actually tells me that this step is currently not mapped within your feature file with the step definitions. Do you want to create one? And you can create it potentially if you wanted to, or you can just ignore it if you already have it. I mean, we already have it, right? So we can just go over here and then we can just revert our code, save this guy. And if you go back, you will see that it turns into white, which means it's currently being mapped. And if you try to write one more step here, so let's say then I should see the the result should be 120. I see a thanks message, something like that. I mean, it doesn't exist basically, but I'm just adding it hypothetically. And you will see that it is currently in the purple color, which means this particular step is not being mapped, which you can actually generate using right clicking and go to definition like how we saw before. Or you can also define a step definition. So if you click that, you will see that there is going to be a big window coming up is going to show you that this is the step which is going to be created for you along with attribute with then as the method name and it's going to give you that at I see a thanks message so this is pretty much exactly the same text that you are seeing over here and then it's automatically creating a throw new pending step exception like that because it is not ready yet so we have to implement that so I can copy this particular step in the clipboard and then I can go to this particular step definition class file. And then if I just go and paste this, if I save it, you will see that the purple color will turn into white color like this, where it says that this is being mapped, which is what this particular feature files are going to be doing for us. So let's try to execute this particular code and see what is going to basically happen. So I'm just going to save this steps over here. And if I wanted to run this particular test, all I'm going to do is I need to go to the test and then select this test explorer. So once you select this test explorer, you will notice that it is automatically going to show me the test of this particular feature file, which we have over here, the calculate.feature along with the name of the scenario, which is nothing but add two numbers over here, along with a tag like at my tag. So this tag is something important. If you're going to be writing a scenario for smoke testing, at regression testing or at TCP of 1203 or something like that. I mean, it depends on what is the test case number that you are going to have. All these details that you can put like a tag, which is going to be helpful for you to recognize and run a specific scenario if that particular scenario has got this particular tag in it. So that's the power of this particular tag itself. So this is something you can do in the spec flow scenarios. And well, as that said, we can try running this particular scenario over here. So if I try running that particular scenario, you will see that it is not going to run and it is going to give me an error message showing that the steps are not implemented, which means it's going to tell me that there is a pending step definitions. Like we have to implement that particular step definition. So if I just go to definition like that, you will see that it is going to bring me up this step definitions and let me remove the clutter over here and you will see that it is currently not even being implemented. And also tells you that to do uh, implement the arrange logics over here for storing and retrieving scenario specific data. So, I mean, SpecFlow is going to give you some more detailed information, like how you can actually start implementing a particular step definitions and stuff. So that's what is this particular steps going to tell you and you can start implementing it. So we can start implementing a simple scenario over here by just removing all these are pending exceptions. So I'm going to probably remove all of these that we are seeing over here, something like this. I don't really want it this particular step as well. So I'm just going to remove this guy and I'm going to do this. So 
given the first number is something like that so and there is also there is an integer of number well that's actually telling me that this particular step actually has got a number of 50 as the argument for that particular method it's more like an argument that you can pass in so if you pass like number is 100 like that so this number is going to take the value of 100 in it so that's how the glue actually works between the step definition as well as the text-based steps on that particular scenario so i'm just going to do this console dot and then i'm going to hit control dot and you can see that there is an using system i'm going to select that and then i'm going to say right line where i'm just going to write the number over here just that i'm just going to say uh probably name of something like that uh which is going to be this one and i'm just going to give probably a string interpolation here something like this where we can just put something like this so you can see that this is going to be the actual value coming out for us once we start printing the value over here so let's try to run this particular scenario once again so i'm going to right click and select the add to numbers method so once i try running it you will see that it is going to show some other information like this particular step that we have is not being implemented or there is not even a step exist basically well that's actually coming because i just removed a step which is not necessary so there is a purple color over here which is okay so let me just remove that as well fix that issue and run the scenario once again and you will see that this time it is passing the reason being we removed all the pending exceptions from the steps over here that's why it is in green color and also you will notice that there is going to be a message saying given the first name is colon 50 which is actually coming from the value that we are printing in over here right and similarly we can keep printing all the values that we have and that way it's going to start printing the values for me over here so i can just remove this from one to second number or something like that and similarly i can even print this particular value and the number is added and that's going to print the value for me so we don't really have a number there something like this so let's try to run this scenario once again and it's going to start printing all the values for me at the moment what we are running is basically like a very very super simple scenario like it's all handling the numbers over here but if we wanted to print an string value for example we could do that as well we probably can say that instead of the then the result should be 120 we can say then the result should be passed so if i put double quotes of passed something like this what this basically tells me is that this particular method that i'm going to be creating should have a string as the argument instead of an integer that we had before so if i right click and if i just try to define a step this time you will notice that it is automatically going to take the value as a string value with an regular expression and it's also creating a argument as passed for us so which is great so now that we could able to actually create a step over here instead of the existing step i'm just going to paste this guy over here so let me just change this to result or something like that and i can pass the particular value over here uh, so this way it's going to print that particular string value for us like passed instead of the integer value that we have been working so long which is great so this is how we could actually use a string value as an input value instead of the integer or integer value or any other type for example there we go you can see that the result is passed is coming over here so it is coming basically from this particular argument that we are passing from the actual plain english text so that's it guys this is the installation and getting started of a basic feature and scenario of spec flows and you also realized how to run the test using the test explorer and what are the dependencies that are being added for the spec flow to run the test and we're running every single test on the top of spec flows in unit and that's why you could see the potential power of running the test using test explorers and stuff so everything is happening for you just a simple installation of the spec flow extension in visual studio 2022 and all the things are going to happen for you automatically so once again, thank you very much for watching this video and you guys have a great day.